My name is Yushka, and I wasn't supposed to be here. And I don't mean I wasn't supposed to be in this room tonight with you. I wasn't supposed to be alive. 6.6 6 million children in this country suffer from child abuse, according to the statistics from uh, child protective agencies in this country. And to give you a visual of what that looks like, one quarter of every elementary school classroom one quarter of the kids in there are suffering from child abuse. That's six out of 24. According to the Center for Control, uh, Disease Control and Prevention, children who suffer from child abuse as adults have a shorter lifespan, suffer from heart disease, liver disease, pulmonary disease, depression, eating disorders, alcoholism, drug abuse, and suicide. So the reason I say that I wasn't supposed to be here tonight is because I am part of those statistics. Instead of going into the who's and what's and where's, I'll just share with you my experience. And trust me, there's light at the end of the tunnel. This is a good story. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Bear with me for a minute. <clears throat> to give you a little background on me, first of all, abuse doesn't know if you're rich or poor, what color you are, what religion you are. It affects everyone across the board. So for people who think oh, only the poor, the people that are in poverty are the ones that suffer with child abuse, it's not true. I grew up in Connecticut in a wealthy family. and. I have experienced sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional neglect, physical neglect, and I am a very grateful member of a 12-step program, at which I joined eight years ago, and I worked very hard, very patiently, which is not easy for me, for a very long time to look at myself and to forgive people and not blame, and I'm not a victim, so I'm not here blaming anybody. Um, I have gone through therapy, and even though I've done a lot of work, and I'm actually okay, there's still pieces of me that suffer. And the reason I wanted to come here tonight is there was something miraculous that happened a couple months ago. I'm a photographer in Jerome, and I had a young lady approach me, and she wanted me to do a photo shoot with her. And I immediately said, yes, let's go down to the basement. <laughs> Why in the world would I say, let's go down to the basement? I, my studio is in a very old building in Jerome, uh, haunted Jerome. And we did this at night in the basement, which is even a lot more fun. And um, she is an actress, a poet. She owns a cafe. Uh, we come from totally different backgrounds, totally different generations. And yet she suffered the same thing that I had. And I didn't know that at the time. She asked me to write a role for her instead of being just a pretty model or a prop in a photo, she wanted to act as if she were uh, something significant to me. She said, what are these photos going to show or represent as you as the artist? What do you want it to show? And I had no, I didn't think of child abuse. I didn't think of any of that. But as I started journaling about, her name is Abby, by the way, um, this role turned into a child who was suffering. And when I met with her and talked to her about the role that I wrote for her, I asked her very gently, how far can I push you with this? Because I don't want to do something that's going to disturb you. And she said, I'm open to anything. So we went down to the basement. <laughs> and I put her in a corner of a very dark area. It was dirty. It was messy. And she, I looked through the lens of the camera, and I looked at her, and she asked me, who am I right now? I put the camera down, and I felt her energy coming through me. And I said, I'm a two-year-old about to be sexually molested. And the words didn't scare her. And what I need to say to you right now is, I don't want to offend anybody in here, but I, in my experience, when you expose something dark to the light, 
it takes away its control over you. So the more I speak about it, because I know there's a lot of people in the world, there's 6.6 .6 million children every year that are suffering. When you talk about it, it makes it less scary. And the healing can begin. So I looked at her and told her what I saw, or who I, what I felt from her. And she immediately crawled, crawled down into a little ball and started to cry, and I started taking pictures. Then I moved her to another area, and she asked me again, who am I now? And I said, you're a seven-year-old, and you have anorexia. And it was amazing that I was saying this to a stranger. I didn't know this girl. And she identified with that. And so she was enraged in the photos. Um, she was throwing things and screaming. And I just started snapping away. Every click of the shutter, as I looked at her, uh, it was becoming more familiar. So her energy was coming through me. I started to feel uncomfortable because I was feeling what she was feeling. And at first I thought I should just stop. But I kept going forward. And I moved her to another area of the basement. Um, and she asked me, who am I now? And I said, you're a 12 year old and you've just been raped. And she understood that and took a board and just started smashing it against the wall. Now I know it sounds strange, but the photos, that was really the miracle because after this three hour shoot of putting her in different places and having her act out these things, when I went to edit the photos, I saw myself. I didn't see her. I am not brave enough to do something like that, what she did. And so I was able to write about how I felt after looking at her photos. I sent it to her and she sent me something back immediately. She were both writing at the same time. And she told me what a healing experience this photo shoot was. It was not just some dirty pictures in a basement. It was a healing episode and it was just truly amazing. So um, we are scheduling another shoot but what's what's fascinating is once you do something like that and you put it out there and people see it and they either love it or hate it, it's artistic, it's not vulgar, but there was another young lady that approached me who was a former heroin addict and she's got eight years clean and sober and her body is riddled with scars from heroin. She's getting tattoos to cover that, but before she does that, she wants photos of that. And I thought, what an incredible experience this is going to be. <laughs> because that's another healing experience for her. It's not to document what she went through. It's to process the trauma and to finally get done with it. I know for me, when I did the shoot with Abby, the next day I was totally exhausted. I was emotionally, physically exhausted. I couldn't get up. And the following day, it was like finally all that trauma was gone. It dissolved. It was just gone. I believe in prayer. I prayed before the shoot, after the shoot, and the very next day, and asked the universe to take these things away for good. I do not ever want to have to feel this again. And so a lot of my writing, I, I write books, I write nonfiction, and uh, I don't name names, I change the names to protect the guilty, which is important. <laughs> um, but I write about my anorexia. So eating disorders is a big part of child abuse. I did not wake up one morning and decide I was going to starve myself. I didn't know I was starving myself. At seven years old, you don't understand what this is. It was the only way I could control anything in my life. It was chaos and it was out of control, but I could control the portions that I refused to eat, if that makes any sense. By the time I was 13, the full-blown anorexia had turned into body, dysmorph body dysmorphic disorder, which is, means I cannot look in a mirror and see what you see. I see something huge. You see something that weighs 89 pounds. And it, um, I didn't realize I even had a problem until I was 25 when I was wearing my daughter's clothing because I was so thin. When I was in my 30s and I was going to therapy, I was able to say a lot of things out loud like rape, which was a dirty word. I was terrified to say that word. Or a babysitter had molested me or anything like that. 
We are so good at hiding that stuff and we try, we put on a pretty face and I was really good at that. I could do that. I could pretend everything was perfect in my life all the time and I became a perfectionist. I made sure my grades were perfect. I made sure I looked perfect. I got married young and had two kids. We all looked perfect and it was all a lie. And so in my 30s in therapy on a couch in a psychologist's office, I broke down and started talking about these things for the first time ever. And the word anorexia came up and I still didn't believe it. I can control what I eat. I can be any weight I want. I can gain weight if I want to. And the truth was I couldn't. And so in my early 40s, I had to learn how to eat, what normal proportions were for a meal, and actually stay alive. There's a lot of damage that goes on in a body when you starve yourself for most of your life. And so I was struggling. And now I'm 52. This is the heaviest I've ever been. I feel good about myself. <laughs> A few years ago, because I do some modeling, there was a photographer that approached me when I turned 50 and he asked if I would do a nude shoot, a nude modeling shoot. And I was like, why would anyone want a nude picture of a 50 year old woman? <laughs> I did it anyway because, first of all, I had gained weight and I felt good about it. And our society makes us believe that women are supposed to look perfect all the time. No wrinkles, no bulges, um, no stretch marks. And I said, screw that, I'm gonna just be myself. And the photo shoot started, didn't Photoshop anything. And I was proud of those pictures. I didn't do it out of vanity. I wrote about how I felt after I did the shoot. I journaled and I blog. And so I put that out there into the world. And it was amazing the response I got emails from women all over the world who go through this and were never able to actually say the words out loud, I'm anorexic. I met a lot of models, young models in their 20s who are anorexic and they have gotten close to me. I'm like a mom to these girls and they will call me no matter where they are. There's one in Australia that will call me and tell me that she's starving herself today because she has a shoot tomorrow and she's crying on the phone. And I, I tell her it's okay for right now but tomorrow please eat something, even if it's just one thing. So the message I wanted to bring today was that it's okay to say out loud, yes, I was abused as a ch child, and that there is help. You can do that in a variety of different ways. And for me, I had to try a little bit of everything, the journaling, the psychologist, the 12-step program. When I moved to Sedona eight years ago, I was going to these full moon things and meeting a Reiki person and a shaman and, and everything does work and just find your niche. And um, I wish Abby was here tonight. She was just an amazing model. I know she had some great things to say. Um, but I'm just, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. I love what I do. And I'm proud of what I do. So thank you very much for coming tonight. <laughs>